What's going on guys, it's Toma Thompson Wrestling here and welcome back to another video and another video where we are discussing another one of TNA's worst match stipulations of all time. This is a video I have promised for a long time and very regrettably, um, today we discuss the electric six sides of steel match between Team 3D and the Latin American Exchange. Before we do get into the video though, be sure to smack the like button and subscribe with notifications on. According to my analytics, the majority of you guys watching these videos aren't actually subscribed, so hit the subscribe button right now and turn on those post notifications so you never miss a TNA video. And comment some video suggestions by the way, because I need some, I'm running out of ideas. Well I'm not, I've actually got loads to be fair, but comment some because I want to know what you guys want to see. And let's just get into it, I'm rambling. Before we get into the feud and the match between LAX and Team 3D, we've got to talk about how these two teams came to be in TNA and how their feud began. Team 3D, who most people will know as the Dudley Boys in WWE, signed with TNA on September 21st, 2005 and debuted on the October 1st, 2005 episode of TNA Impact. Team 3D's first rivalry saw them feuding with America's Most Wanted, the team of Chris Harris and James Storm, who I spoke about in my last video, which you can go check out if you'd like, but after this video. At TNA Turning Point, Team 3D defeated America's Most Wanted in their first feud. At Final Resolution 2006, they had their first opportunity at Gold when they faced America's Most Wanted once again, this time with the NWA World Titles on the line but Team 3D won the match, but because of Team Canada's interference, so the referee awarded the match to America's Most Wanted, and they retained the titles. From there, Team 3D would bring in Spike Dudley, and he went under the name as Brother Runt, which is just a brilliant name, and they would begin feuding with Team Canada, defeating them in a Six Sides of Steel match at Lockdown 2006. After this, they would feud with the James Gang, which if you don't know who the James Gang are, the, they're, they're, they're the New Age Outlaws. It's Kip James, aka Billy Gunn, and BG James, aka Road Dog. So they're called the James Gang since they're both called James. What an awful tag team name. Oh my god, what a step down from the New Age Outlaws. They faced off at Slammiversary with Team 3D getting the W. At the start of 2007, they began feuding with LAX for the NWA tag titles after becoming number one contenders for the titles. And so yeah, this is where the feud officially begins. The two teams squared off at Final Revolution, but Team 3D were disqualified after interference from Brother Runt. They then faced each other again, this time at Destination X for the titles, but this time it would be interference from Alex Shelley that would cost them winning the titles. But then Team 3D would make the challenge, and LAX would accept. They accepted Team 3D's challenge of facing them in an electric steel cage match at Lockdown 2007. So that's how Team 3D made to this point. Let's go ahead and talk about how LAX got here and then we'll actually get into watching the match. LAX formed on the December 31st 2005 episode of Impact when Conan, Apollo and Homicide ambushed Bullet Bob Armstrong. Their gimmick was essentially that they were anti-American, with immigration being the subject of many of their promos. And from this attack on Armstrong, they started a feud with the James Gang, I hate saying that name. Homicide and Apollo were scheduled to face the James Gang at Against All Odds, but Apollo was released from his TNA contract prior to this match because of no showing an event, and so the replacement of Machete was introduced, and he and Homicide would lose to the James Gang. However, just a month later, Conan would fire Machete from the stable after he lost to Sharkboy, and Hernandez was introduced as his replacement. On the July 20th episode of Impact, NWA World Tag Team Champions AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels made an open challenge for a contract to face them for the titles. Essentially, whoever came out signed the contract and they would face each other for the titles. And this was answered, of course, by LAX, who signed the contract and on the August 24th episode of Impact, they would defeat Styles and Daniels to win the titles. LAX would actually lose the titles a month later and no surrender back to Styles and Daniels, but then would regain them again at Bound for Glory. I don't know why TNA had those title changes so often. 
LAX would then begin feuding with America's Most Wanted and they would steal a victory over them at Genesis and after the match Conan instructed Homicide to hit Gail Kim with a pile driver before PT Williams made the save. And then TNA management director at the time Jim Cornette who was also an on screen character came out strips them off the titles for disrespectful conduct. And interestingly enough despite the fact that LAX were heels and anti American the fans booed this they were so annoyed that LAX were being stripped of the titles not being stripped I nearly just said they're just being stripped ignore me in the end LAX refused to return the belts and kayfabe hired lawyers to present the case that TNA was refusing their first amendment rights it was really stupid let's not dwell on this for too long LAX would continue feuding with America's Most Wanted and they would actually be the ones to break up the team after defeating them in a title versus team match on the December 14th episode of Impact and from there they began feuding with Team 3D. So let's finally talk about this godforsaken match. Let's talk about this electric steel cage match now. So this match took place at Lockdown 2007, which was one of TNA's gimmick pay-per-views where every match took place in six sides of steel, aka a steel cage. So in order for the matches to have some variety and not just be the same old cage match, TNA would add some twists to a couple of the matches. On this show we saw a lethal knockdown match, an escape match, and a special guest referee six sides of steel match, which are all perfectly fine variations of the cage match. However, also on the show, we saw the Six Sides of Steel blindfold match, which I reviewed in my last video, which you can check out, and of course, the Electric Steel Cage match. Anyway, let's finally watch this match, and when I say watch, I mean properly react to it and watch. Usually I just give a play-by-play -play and a review with some images and some videos of the match, but this time, we're actually going to react to it because I haven't seen it. So, I'm going to turn my camera on, let's do this. What's up guys, here we are for the reaction section of this video. If you haven't seen my face before, this is it. Uh, I've shown my face on camera before, but that was quite a while ago. And I know I have a lot of new fans, so maybe you haven't seen it. But today, yesterday, we're going to be watching this Electric Steel Cage match because I thought it would be more interesting to actually show my reaction because I've never seen the match. So I feel like this would be more interesting. Uh, as you can see, the background is very bare. I've only got an Arctic Monkeys poster, but uh, I'm thinking of getting a bunch of TNA posters, some 8x10s, putting them on that wall so we have a more interesting background. Uh, because this is something I want to do more in my videos, like reaction stuff. Uh, and that Arctic Monkeys poster will probably be moved like over there, uh, so you can't actually see it. But yeah, let's just get into this reaction. I I'm ca I'm can't tell if I'm excited or nervous to watch this. Um... I feel like I'm probably, I'm a bit of both. I'm a bit of both, just just let's say that. Anyway, starting this in three, two, one. The AirPods are on. Uh, hopefully I don't get copyrighted, like I said before. Three, two, one. So they have just turned on the electric steel cage. Made it so that when you touch it, you get electrocuted, I presume. I'm only going to, uh, this video will be cut up. I'm not going to show the entire match because I'll just be stealing content. I'm going to cut it up the actual more interesting parts where I'm actually saying something and reacting to stuff. So uh, let's see this. About a minute in, we're seeing some standard action, but I'm sure this is going to go, go badly very soon. I'm sure of it. Oh, big belly to belly there. Jeez. Okay, so apparently he touched the door and not the actual cage, so he didn't get shocked. Why, why didn't you just throw him into the cage like that's whatever he's trying to get his hand on the cage oh nah oh he's bit him ouch i feel like that probably hurts more than an electric steel cage oh he put him into the cage oh no he shocked his hand wow oh the humanity make it stop sarcasm if you can't tell oh he's busted open already from from what What's busted him open? They haven't... What busted him open in this match? What could have possibly made him bleed? I keep confusing Hernandez and Brother Ray in this match. Just because they're both bold. I keep confusing them. I need to stop doing that. Why are they putting him in the door? Just put him in the cage. 
The cage hurts more! It's electric! What are you doing? It's the most counterproductive thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like, come on! See, they're both on the top rope. They had the easy opportunity to throw them into the electric cage, but again, they just choose to suplex them. Like, they're not utilising this electric cage as much as they should be. Like, I don't get it. Like, what are they doing? I'm starting to get bored. How are two of them bleeding? It, ha it still hasn't been mentioned or replayed of what made them bleed. Oh, they got weapons in now. Okay, maybe this match will at least get a little bit exciting. Now that weapons are involved. Oh, he's going to get the tables. Okay. Oh, he shuts the door on him. Big backdrop neck breaker. One, two. Oh. This is so bad. This is really boring. I'm not going to lie. Oh, spinning neck breaker. They have barely used the cage aspect. Oh, wait. I might be speaking too soon. Throw him into the cage! Throw him into the cage! Shock him! Oh man, they've barely actually used the steel cage. Like, man. We're about 12 minutes into this match. Again, the cage has barely been used. And when it has, it's been very subtle. Come on, here we go. This has to be it. There we go! Oh my god, that's selling. That's selling. Oh my god. Oh my god. And they made the lights flash black and white. Sure. <laughs> that selling was insane. Flopped around like a fish. The crowd are chanting Fire Russo. Interesting enough, this has not been cut out of the Impact Plus version, which I'm watching this on, which is very surprising. But Fire Russo chants are loud and clear. Oh, oh, through the table! Jeez! So apparently he wasn't getting shocked by the, the cage because he had boots on and was wearing gloves, which I guess makes sense. And that spot was pretty cool. Into the electric cage! Why is he grabbed onto it? Oh, they they messed up the 3D. They messed up the 3D, but here we go. There's the 3D. And that's it. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you did enjoy it, then smack the like button and subscribe with notifications on. Like I said, leave some video suggestions and video ideas that you'd like to see covered uh, in the comments. Whether it's WWE, TNA or anything wrestling related. Follow me on Twitter at top Wrestling. My Instagram is at I'm Tom Bell. Uh, I've got a Patreon as well, which I need to promote more because like no one's actually subscribed to it. But you can check that out if you want. I'm going to... I eventually like do some more work on it so it's actually like appealing and you actually want to subscribe to it uh, but yeah see you all soon smack the like button subscribe notifications goodbye and keep on rolling